All right, welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Uh, today, for another SSL Family Faith episode, another Sunday morning uh, message here. Um, what a, well, It's been a lot of fun to, uh, to do these messages, and hopefully you guys are enjoying them. Uh, for those of you who've been following along and watching, and for those of you who are new to, uh, to these, uh, this series, we, uh, I release one of these every Sunday. I try to get one out every Sunday morning, unless there's something crazy going on. And so, welcome, and uh, glad you're here with us uh, today, wherever you are in the world uh, watching uh, this uh, SSL Family Faith episode. So today we're going to open uh, in the book of Luke. Uh, we're going to start in the Gospel of Luke, and we're talking about a couple different things. Uh, this is very relevant to some things that I have been going through lately, and my wife and I and my family, um, and things that always happen to us in, in life. And so whether you're a uh, believer in Jesus Christ or you're, or, you're, or you're new to this whole thing and just kind of checking out what's going on here, uh, hopefully uh, we have uh, something that will encourage you, help you, and uh, maybe bring you closer to, uh, to faith in Jesus, and that's, that's the idea. So, uh, we're going to start in Luke chapter 6, verses 47 through 49. Reading from the English Standard Version today, uh, starting in verse 47. Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house, who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream broke against that house and could not shake it, because it had been well built. So this gives us an example of a man who builds his house on a rock, on this solid, unmovable foundation. And Jesus gives us an example. This is a man that is that hears my word and does them. And uh, we talked about this before, being hearers of the word and doers of the word. Uh, this is a, a person who has his faith, in Jesus Christ, who puts his faith in God. And this is this great example of building our life on this rock. And then he goes down and tells us about another example. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built his house on ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it, immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. And what a great contrast, what a great example of how we are to live our lives. Not just showing up on church every Sunday and punching in and punching out and doing uh, the opposite of what the Bible calls us to do all week long and, and acting one way on Sundays and doing the opposite all week. Uh, it's, it's coming to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. It's giving our life over to Him. And that, that moment that you, that you realize the, the price that, that Jesus paid, that God ultimately paid, for our sin, that we're broken and sinful, and that we need Him, we put our faith in Jesus, and then we start to learn and understand what this book has for us, and, and all the, the things that are in here. It teaches us how to live our lives, and uh, how to speak, how not to speak, how to how, uh, manage our relationships, and our households, and our husbands, and our wives, and our children, and our finances, and all these things are, are taught to us through all these different books in the Bible. And when we do those things, it says that we build our, our house, this, this house of our life, on the foundation of our faith and our, our foundation of, of God's Word. No matter what storm comes in this world, no matter what flood, no matter what, what worldly storm attacks us, it cannot shake our faith and it cannot shake the foundation that we have built in this, in this Word and on Jesus Christ as our Savior. We don't build our, our life on, and, and many of us do these things, and I've done these things, and, and I still have temptations to do these things all the time. We build our life on money and success and uh, you know, family and friends and, and these relationships we have with one another, even on our spouses and our husbands and our wives. We put so much weight on their shoulders to, to make us happy and fulfill all of our needs that we're not looking to the one who can ultimately fulfill our needs instead of our husbands and our wives. We build our, our life on those things. What happens when a storm comes and those things might be taken away or affected or bad times come, financial hardships come, sickness comes, death comes. There's one thing that is true for all of us in this world, and that is we will all face some type of suffering. We will all have hard times. We will all have things that go bad and go wrong. We will all have struggles and hurt. This world is a broken place that we live in, and we cannot put our faith in things of this world. 
The Bible says that we are citizens of another place. We are citizens in heaven. And that when we put our faith in Jesus Christ and we put our, our, give our lives over to him and truly believe in him and what he did for us, that uh, we become citizens of heaven, we become God's children, that, that uh, we, ha we put our faith in another place. And it gives us this, this rock, this solid foundation where things can't affect us quite as much. It might seem easier said than done, but that's how it works. And as we grow, grow closer and, and, and closer to God in our walk and we learn more and more, that foundation becomes stronger and stronger. And as these storms batter our life, we're able to withstand them. We're able to push them back and we're able to stand strong and firm on this rock. And all the people around us, you know, I think about... I think this is one of the coolest examples in the Bible of, uh, you know, just how to picture this, this idea of having faith in God and doing the things that he commands us to do and, and shows us is right versus, you know, living in the world and doing all the things that we shouldn't be doing. You know, you, you picture this, I, I always picture this beach and, you know, you've got these guys that have built their little shacks or houses or whatever on the rock and then you've got these guys, you know, down on the sand or on the beach that have built their houses and then the storm comes and it affects us all. It's the same storm that hits all of us. And you see the people on the beach just being washed away. And the people up on the rock are, are withstanding. And maybe they're affected. Maybe some shingles flew off. Maybe, you know, their house was tattered a little bit. Maybe there was some problems. Maybe they hurt. Maybe, you know, they had some struggles. But they're still standing strong. And I picture all these guys on the beach, you know, looking up and thinking, what is that? What did they do differently than I did? I built my house. They built their house. What did they do differently? And it looks different to each of us, right? And that's the same way when we go through these storms and these struggles in our life and all the people around us are looking at us. How did they handle that? How did they get through that? We put our faith in Jesus and when we follow His commands and when we truly believe in Him and we have this unmovable faith in Him, the way we handle the suffering, the way we handle these struggles looks very different to the outside. It looks very different to people who might be going through the very same struggles. We will all encounter storms in our life. And no matter who you are or where you're at or what you've been through or, or how old you are or anything like that, there's, there, we will all have these storms. These storms in life come. Life, life goes good sometimes and life is hard sometimes. But it's how we handle those trials. It's how we handle that suffering, as the Bible calls it many times. It's how we handle and, and persevere through those things that is important. And that's what we need to prepare ourselves for because we never know when these things are going to come. We never know when, when bad things are going to happen. It, it will happen. And we, we, just, we need to prepare ourselves for it. So there's a, we're going to be going through a little bit of the book of Job today. And so we can flip our Bibles almost to the middle. Um, the, one of the wisdom books, um, uh, Job, uh, Job uh, Ecclesiastes and Proverbs. And... This book is, is really interesting, um, and I'm also going to link in the description of this video to a Bible Project YouTube video that kind of gives a high-level overview of the entire book of Job, if you're interested in kind of understanding a little bit more. But when I read this book for the first time many years ago, um, it just really blew my mind. At, at, there, there's so much in here. We're going to look at a few pieces of this book, um, but I would encourage you guys to, to read through it if you have a, have a minute. Um, from front to back and at least listen to that Bible Project video and, and read through uh, what you can. Um, it's also kind of a hard, it, it's, there's some things, especially right in the first, we're going to kind of skip over the, the, real, the first part of this book. Um, there's some things in here that are very confusing and so um, if you have questions please let me know. I, I'd love to answer them for you in more detail but for today I want to focus on uh, Job and his character and what happened to him and him is kind of an example of uh, of what happens. And so we're going to read uh, just kind of introduction to Job here in his life. Who was this guy? Um, and I also want to kind of put this in context. This book, you know, although, you know, kind of halfway through the, the Bible or, or, you know, more than halfway through the Old Testament, uh, this was kind of seen as, as probably happening in, in the Genesis days. So not in chronological order necessarily, but the book of Job happened kind of earlier in, uh, in the, the chronological Bible story, I guess you could say. So here's the introduction to, to Job. We're going to read verses one, uh, chapter uh, 1, verses 1 through maybe 3. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. 
There were born to him seven sons and three daughters. Seven sons and three daughters. He had a big family. He possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 female donkeys, and very many servants, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. So this gives an introduction to Job. Job was, he had a big family, many sons and daughters, thousands of sheep, thousands of camel, thousands of oxen, donkeys, all these great things. He had a huge farm. He had a huge, you know, livelihood, many servants. You know, he, he was the greatest in all the East. Like, the, he was a, a rich man. He was a very successful person. Uh, things had gone very well for him. And uh, it, it describes in, in this book uh, later on that, you know, God had kind of protected him and, and kind of, you know, helped him. He was an upright and blameless man. He was a, a faithful servant of God's kingdom. He loved God loved his family. He was successful. He had a lot. He had a lot to lose. And we're going to jump down a little bit to verse 13. Things start to go really bad for Job very quickly. He doesn't expect it. It just says, Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And there came a messenger, messenger to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. So he comes back and he says, Flocks are, his, his livestock is being killed. And another man comes while he was yet speaking. So while this guy's telling him all these horrible things that just happened out here, another servant of his is coming up. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. So this other guy runs up and says, All his sheep are dead. While he was yet speaking, so this guy runs up, this guy runs up, and another guy runs up to tell him. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, the Chaldeans formed three groups and made a raid on the camels and took them and struck, them, struck down the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. All his camels are dead. You know, his livestock, his, 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 his little farm, and, well, not his little farm, his huge, his huge empire of, of what he had built, and all his things were just coming crashing down around him. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young people, and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you comes running up and tells him the worst news of all. A great wind came up and blew this house down where his entire, all his children were eating and drinking wine. And they're all dead. And he realized that he had lost everything. Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshipped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. What an, what an awful thing. What an awful story. What a, what a horrible moment in this man's life when everything that he had for so many years, his family, his flocks, all his wealth, all his possessions, all his things, were just crashing down around him. One comes up and tells him bad news. Another comes up and tells him bad news. Another thing happens. Another thing happens. But isn't this exactly what happens to us sometimes? Isn't this exactly what happens in our life? It seems like, you know, I, I, I've heard sayings before about this where, you know, it's like everything happens at once. You know, one thing happens, another thing happens, and another thing happens. It happens in our life. It's happened in my life. The most amazing thing about this is Job, an upright and blameless man, a man who had faith in God. His faith is being tested here in, in, a, in the most amazing and, and horrible way. And yet he tears his clothes off and he says, Lord, I came into this world naked and you can take me away naked. It's all yours, God. He pray, He's worshiping God in this moment. 
this moment of just despair, this moment where everything has been taken away from him, this moment where everything that he thought was going so well, all of a sudden, in a blink of an eye, it's all been taken away. And he's sitting there and it says, in all this Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. He's not blaming God. How many times have I heard this? How many times have people said this? How many times have I even personally blamed God when things are going horrible? God, why have you done this to me? He's not saying that here. He praises God. Are we only faithful when things are going well? Do we only praise the Lord when everything's going okay? Life is going well, everybody's healthy, money in the bank, got a house, got cars, job's going good, everything's on autoplay, everything's rolling along. It's easy to praise God then, isn't it? Praise God, everything's going great. Oh, thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you. Oh, let's pray. Let's, let's, let's like the Lord for all these things He's given us. All this great time. But then what happens when some of those things crash down, when some of those things are taken away, when we, we fall on hard times, businesses go bankrupt, financial troubles happen to all of us at different times in life, car accidents, cars get destroyed, boats get destroyed, storms come, fires happen, animals pass away, children get sick, children may pass away, husbands and wives Grandmas and grandpas, family members, moms and dads, people get sick, people pass on. Hard times. Are we praising God in those times? That's the true test of our faith in Jesus is when we can truly praise the Lord and find the light through all the darkness. This is what Job's doing here. And I think sometimes it's, 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 it's hard to understand when we're in the middle of the darkness. It's hard to understand when we're in the middle of, of trials, right? When, when, when the tests of life come, when, these, when we're going through these trials, it's hard to understand why has this happened. And I think there's a couple ways to, to understand trial. Why, why doesn't God just uh, wipe away all the tears, right? Why doesn't he just make everything perfect? There's a whole other sermon there. God has made a perfect place for us in heaven. It's not this world. This world is broken. Sin entered this world and through Adam and Eve, and, and it's been here in this world ever since, and it will be on this world until Jesus comes to take us home. But one of the reasons that there's struggles in this world, one of the reasons that there's trials in this world, it is to let us know and, and let us know that we need Jesus. We can't do it on our own. We can't prevent the storms from coming in our life from the moment we're born to the moment we pass on. We, we can't do that. We, we can't do it on our own accord. Every single person who has ever lived and will ever, ever live on this earth needs Jesus. And suffering, sometimes it has this way, when we go through these trials, we go through these hard times, it has this way of pointing people to the truth. It has this way of pointing people to Jesus. And I hate to say it, but sometimes in the the lowest moments of our, of our life, the best thing can happen to us. And that's when we can come to know the Lord. We can come to, to throw it all on His shoulders because we can't do it. It's hard to realize that when everything's going good and, and you're at the, up, the highest point of your life. You know, everything's going great. It's hard to realize that we need Jesus. We need a Savior. Suffering through these trials can help us repent. If you've come to know the Lord and you've put your faith in Jesus Christ and you're trying to you know, walk along the, the road and uh, uh, the narrow road and, and, and follow the word and the way and you're, and you're trying to follow Jesus and sometimes we have sin that, that we don't see in our life. Sometimes we're doing things that we don't realize until we fall flat on our face, until something comes up, we trip and we fall and we're in a spot where we all of a sudden can realize what we've done. Sometimes that sin puts us in a place where we can repent, where we can ask for forgiveness, where we can change our ways, we can do better. And sometimes it's just through suffering and, and trials that that happens, unfortunately. You know, I, 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 I'm not going to speak for everyone out there, but I think people in general, and myself, I'll, I'll just use myself, are pretty dumb. <laughs> and, you know, we go through life and and, and, and a dumb, in, in, not in an in a, in a intellectual way, but dumb in a, uh, we don't see our own uh, faults very easily. And this is kind of through God's sovereign and holy and powerful design that he 
um, sometimes allows us to trip and fall. He allows these storms to happen because it helps us to grow closer to him, helps us to rely on him. Life on earth, life in this world is certainly not always going to be easy, um, as I've said many times already, because I want to drive that point home. Lisa and I have recently gone through a lot of various trials and struggles, um, shared a, a few many times in the past in other sermons, but uh, my wife lost her job years ago and brought us uh, into some financial uh, um, awareness, you know, and, and tried to, to do things differently, which led us out to this farm and living a more sustainable DIY type life. Um, it led us to all the things that we're doing today. We didn't know that was the point in God's plan when that happened, but he led us through it. Then I lost my job, and he led us through it. These little storms came into our life. And through those things, it, it wasn't easy to understand God's plan. I mean, it wasn't easy to understand why these things were happening, and there was struggles. There were financial struggles. You know, there were things that had to be figured out, and we, it took us a while sometimes, and it wasn't easy for us. We, we, we put our faith in this, but that doesn't mean that everything just comes easy. Sometimes it takes prayer and it takes time to, for us to really see God's plan revealed in our life, and we have to trust that. Most recently, my wife, uh, Lisa, a few months ago, um, she'd been having these, these little uh, mini seizures and these spells, and um, she was really getting worried, and I was getting worried, and we, uh, we took her down to the emergency room, and... They confirmed that uh, these were, this was a form of epilepsy that she has had. And she's kind of had these things go on throughout her life and uh, didn't really understand what it was. And they're becoming kind of more frequent recently. And so we, we wanted to make sure she was all right. But that led to her getting some medicine to help correct the problem, which is wonderful. It's been working great and she's been doing great. But unfortunately, that means that in the state of Michigan, from the last time that you have a, a type of seizure, uh, you cannot drive for six months. And this has been very difficult for her to not be able to have that freedom of just jumping in the car and driving and doing things that needs to be done. And she's had to rely on me to drive her and our, uh, our oldest daughter. That's been very difficult. And then on top of that, a few months go by, I'm out in one of our pastures here, moving some pigs around, doing farming things. And our oldest boar, our breeding uh, boar, uh, attacked me. And uh, darn near killed me. Came real close to cutting some uh, pretty major arteries in my leg and put me down for at least a few weeks. Now I'm not able to drive. I had a brace on my leg and had surgery and everything else. I couldn't, couldn't move my right leg, couldn't get in a car and drive. We, just before this pig attack happened, we had just got a new puppy. And for those of you who've had puppies, you can understand the, the, the things that come along with a puppy, the, the potty training and the messes in the house and the, the teaching of the dog and uh, weather, you know, outside was rainy and so it was hard to get her out and get her in and we're tracking mud in the house and there's messes in the house. Lisa, you know, my wife's taking care of this this thing and the puppy's in there and my leg, I'm down, I can't do anything. She's trying to take care of all the things around the farm. My girls are trying to take care of all the things around the farm. We've got homeschool going on still. She's trying to teach. The kids are trying to get through those things. You know, I'm laid up on the couch taking pain medicine and, and not able to do much. And this is the storm that we, we all of a sudden, you know, we're like, what happened? This happens and then this happens and then this happens and then this happens. And we're trying to understand, you know, God, what, what is it that you have? What, what are you trying to tell us? You know, what, what is this? What, what are we doing? We, we try to stay faithful. Was it always easy? We had times when it was rough. It causes, a, it causes a lot of struggle, right, in a family when things get turned upside down. And if you're going through a struggle right now, the only thing that's going to get you through is faith that God's plan is greater than your own and that light will come out of all these things. Through this whole thing, we saw the body of believers in this area from three different churches, friends and family, come together and show up for us and our family. Like, I've never seen people show up before. People brought us meals. People 
helped us with things. People stopped by and checked on us. People offered to take us to grocery stores. People picked me up and took me places. People came and helped with, with farm chores. People helped while I was in the hospital. People helped my kids. People helped my wife. People helped me. One Saturday, more than 15 people showed up at my house and just started fixing things and mowing the grass and, and cleaning things up and fixing fencing and cleaning pig stalls and moving animals around and redoing things and fixing my tractors and fixing you know all these things and planting things and wood chipping things and people just started just came out and just took care of things and all of a sudden I just started to see this amazing light just show up in our life and man was that an eye-opener for me man was that it just taught me so, so so many things that God worked through that whole situation in our life that I you know when that happened and I was sitting in the hospital I didn't see all that <laughs> I couldn't understand it I was just like Job you know ripping my robe and shaving my head and being like God take me I don't understand it I still love you God but what is going on it was tough we don't always understand. We don't always understand when these struggles happen, and it seems to happen, like, like I've said before, in waves. You know, It's like, everything's going good, everything's going good, and then all of a sudden, boom, 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 all these things happen. I'm sure you guys out there might be in the middle of a storm right now. And if you're not, you need to expect it. Because in 1 Peter, and I've read these verses before, these are great. this is a great verse to, to kind of commit to memory or, or have in your back pocket. 1 Peter tells us, it says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. It tells us right here, don't be surprised. These things are going to happen. God has never promised us that we would not have trials in this world. He never, he's not even promised us that the trials and the suffering that we'll go through in this world aren't going to be even a little bit more than we can handle sometimes. Because it just proves that we have to rely on His power, not our own. In fact, the Bible tells us that we are going to go through trials. And not only are we going to go through trials and suffering, but don't, don't be surprised when it happens. In fact, the next verse tells us that rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings that you may also rejoice and be glad when His glory is revealed. We go through these, these, uh, these tests, we go through these hard times, we need to rejoice because through this, we will persevere with His power and His strength and faith in Him. And it says, be glad when His glory is revealed, when His plan in our life is revealed. It's such an amazing moment to look back and say, that's why I went through that. I went through that because the Lord was giving me an opportunity to persevere through something and it led me to this, or it led me to share Jesus with this person, or it led me to meet this person, which and then you know allowed me to, to witness to them or to share my faith with them. It made me stronger. If I would have never gone through that, I would have never done this or this or this. It saved me from this struggle. It saved me from this. Even though it was hard, you know, we should rejoice because we know that when we're going through a hard time, that something good will come of it. That we will at least persevere and become stronger just for having been tested. And that we need to remain faithful in the Lord. We need to expect these trials. If you're going through a great time right now, if, if everything's looking good, that's great. But just know that it may not always I don't want to be the I don't want to be the downer <laughs> today. But just know that God tells us that it's not always going to be good. There's going to be hard times. We need to prepare ourselves, not just financially, not just physically. We, you know, we talk a lot about emergency preparedness and prepping and all these things here. You know, we need to prepare ourselves spiritually. We need to prepare ourselves in our faith. We need to be prepared to get through any trial. You, know, you can save up all the, the canned food you want and, and pack away all the toilet paper in your, in your closet, in your basement that you want to, but the first sign of tr uh, struggle and your family falls apart and you lose your faith, you haven't, really, you haven't really prepared against anything. We have to be prepared faithfully and we have to, uh, uh, to remain close to God and understand that these trials come and they, they, they actually come for our good and our benefit. It's not easy to, to understand. It's not easy to understand when we're going through it. In fact, uh, back in our story of Job, um, I... I, I <laughs> The, the whole middle of this book, uh, Job's 
has these three or four friends. I can't remember if there are three or four that come to him and they, you know, they're, they're giving him all these, this advice, you know, and, and Job really goes back and forth. He's on this emotional roller coaster, you know, more bad things happen to him. He gets these sores all over his body and he's, uh, he's just, he's just a mess. I mean, he's literally lost everything. He's, everything is just a mess. And uh, the whole center of this book is kind of him, you know, uh, going back and forth with his friends and, and they're trying to, you know, blame him and what have you done? You must have done something sinful to deserve all these things. And uh, it, it's, it's quite a thing if you read through all of it. Um, but Job's on this, th this ride, you know, he's faithful and, and he's without sin, but he also is doubting and, he, and he's, he's, he's asking God, you know, why? And, and he's trying to understand and, and his friends are giving all this bad information. He's trying to argue with them. And, and I, and I feel like he's just tossed back and forth. And I've been there. I've been there. I've gone through things. My wife and I have gone through things together and we've gone through things separately that have put us right where Job's at. And this is such a great example of struggle in our life. Uh, we're going to go to Job 38, uh, chapter 38, verses 4, and we're going to read, read a little bit through here. So Job, Job asks God, he finally says, God, why has this happened? Please explain this to me, because he doesn't see it yet. He doesn't understand it. It's a great example, though. Uh, verse 38, 4 here, God answers him. And I love this. I love all that. You could read through this whole, this whole section here, all chapter 38, but verse 4. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding, who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made clouds its garment? and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for its, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no further, and here shall your proud waves be stayed. And it goes on and on. And God just sits here, and he's answering Job. He says, he, he answers with all these questions. And I love this, because you kind of see this, this, uh, this part of kind of facetious um, attitude that God has with Job. Why are you, at, why are you questioning me, Job? Can you even understand the cosmic level of power that I have over every inkling of the universe and of the earth? Were you there when I created the earth and set it on its foundations and put it in motion and, and told the land where to go and the water where to go and the wind where to go and put clouds and sun? And so, uh, you know, were you there? Do you understand how all that works? Do you understand how I hold it all together? You know, you think about the, the just insane power that God has over all things. And here's one little man in his one little world going through a struggle, and he's questioning God's power. He's questioning, you know, God, why did this happen? And our, how many times have we been there? How many times have we sat there and questioned, questioned God's power, questioned His, you know, why is He doing this to us? And the truth is, we may sometimes never understand why we go through suffering or struggle, but we have faith that God knows what we need, that God knows the answer, that God is allowing these things to happen to us for reasons that we don't understand because He is sovereign and He is great and He is powerful and He is all-knowing and we are not. We can't even comprehend in our minds the ultimate power and omnipotence that, that God has. We can't even understand it. We can't comprehend it. We don't always know what God's plan is, but we have faith that His plan is greater than anything that we could plan, than anything that we could set aside, that, that we could figure out. You know, we have all these great plans, and I, I, I plan around here all the time. And then sometimes a wrench gets thrown into life, and plans change. And then all of a sudden, through faith in, in God, life takes a different turn. And somewhere that I didn't expect it to, something that I couldn't have thought of, and something happens, and another thing happens. And I always love to look back on those things and say, oh, thank you, Lord. That's where you were. That's what you were doing with me. That's what you were doing with my family. That's where you had us. That's why. Sometimes we don't see it. We have to understand that God is above all things to give our struggles over to Him. Stop trying to defeat the struggle and get through it all by yourself. 
We are in need of a Savior, Jesus Christ. And His power and His strength can get us through these things. No matter what you're going through in your life right now, no matter what struggle you're facing, no matter what thing is happening in your life, give it over to the Lord and watch Him work greatness in it. We have to take every trial that we face in this world, everything that we go through, every bit of suffering, and look at it as an opportunity to share the light of Jesus in the darkness of a situation that people outside who are watching us as believers in Jesus Christ, people are watching how we handle these things. And when we persevere through something, people see that and they, they, want, they want that. They want to understand what that is. How did he go through that with a smile on his faith? on his face? How did he go through that and it didn't destroy him? How did Job make it through this situation? It didn't just ruin him. The end of the story of this, this book of Job has a, has a happy ending and God restores him. And God restores the things that he had and restores his life. And We have to look forward to that. We have to look forward to what the outcome of God's plan might be because it's going to be probably something much greater than you could ever imagine. We have to build everything that we do in this life on solid ground, on the faith in Jesus Christ so that no matter what storm hits our shores, no matter what awful thing happens, that we have a firm and strong foundation on our faith in Jesus Christ and we know that we are citizens of heaven and that nothing in this world can destroy us because nothing in this world could destroy Jesus Christ. He defeated this world and everything in it, and He defeated sin once and for all for each of us. Let's pray together. Dear Father, Lord, I thank You, uh, thank you for suffering. I thank You for trials. I thank You for the struggles that we go through in this world, but it's not always easy. I know that's a strange thing to say, God, that we... We thank you for those struggles, but we know that you have a plan that's so much greater than ours. We know that you have a plan that's so much more powerful than anything we could think of. We know that you've worked through all the details, that as you're holding the universe together and every bit of life on this planet, that you somehow have time to guide us through life and draw us closer to you because you love us, because you care for us. Because even though sometimes we feel lost in this sinful world, Sometimes this world, the weight of this world, crushes us, Lord, and it hurts us, and it, it's hard. We know that you're right there by our side, ready to lift us out of the ashes and ready to restore us. We know that nothing in this world can defeat us, God, because you've defeated this world, and because one day we will be with you in a perfect paradise in heaven, Lord, and we thank you for that. We thank you for the hope that we have through your Son, Jesus Christ, that, uh, that we may be with you. We thank you for that redeeming power, Lord. We thank you for the forgiveness. We thank you for the, suf the suffering that we, that we have sometime in our life that draws us closer to you, draws us to repentance, draws us to see the need for a Savior in our life. Lord, I, I know that there's so many listening today and uh, many days from today that will hear this and they will uh, be going through storms in their life. Lord, I ask you to be with them, draw them close to you, comfort them, help to reveal the plan that you have for their life. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys for uh, sticking around for another uh, SSL Family Faith episode. Um, one, of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite books in the Bible, Job. Um, check out that Bible Project video. I'll put a link in the description. And as always, if you have questions about anything, uh, I don't know everything, but I certainly will try to find a good answer for you. Please uh, throw those comments in the description. Email me, and I will get back to you uh, just as soon as I possibly can. Uh, I know that uh, I have a few, few questions out there that still need to be answered. If you're watching, I will get back to you, I promise. Uh, life is just getting back to normal around here for us, and so I appreciate your patience. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and may God bless you and whatever you're going through.